Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I have the privilege of being your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today, the more observant of you will have noticed it is my intention to talk to you about hats and one hat in particular. But let's talk about hats in general to start with because for me, even though it's a rather sunny day today, it's winter time in the UK and winter in this country conjures up images in my mind of, you know, protecting myself from the elements, wearing the overcoat, the raincoat, and of course, with those items go the accessories, things like the gloves and the scarves and the hat, of course, a great opportunity to add a hat to your wardrobe when the weather turns bad. Now, it's really a wonderful thing, a hat, because if you're a gentleman, such as myself, a little bit bereft on the hair front, my hair kind of went south when I was in my early 40s, um, so I really dislike getting my head wet in the rain, and that terrible, you're, you know, you might have experienced it, that sensation of water hitting your head and sliding down the back of your shirt collar. There is nothing more motivation crushing than feeling cold, wet water running down the back of your shirt collar on a, on a dreary, wet day. So for me, a hat is an essential at this time of year. However, if we look back in the annals of time, the hat and its use generally has been on a decline, particularly the dress hats, which I'm going to talk about today, uh, because, you know, if we, if we look back at an image of a group of men, say from the 1930s to even the 1970s, we will see most men will be sporting some form of hat or dress hat, as we call them today. Um, and they are great. They are great items. They bring a little bit of panache to your styling. Um, they bring warmth and protection, yes, from the elements, but also they do lots of other things. You know, um, they even add about three to four inches to your height. So if you're a gentleman who feels that you're a little bit shorter than you'd like to be, wearing a hat when you're out and about will add that little bit of presence to your appearance when you're outdoors. Um, so tragically though, as time has unfolded, um, all of those eras where we used to see the, the most stylishly dressed, like Cary Grant, always wearing a nice hat when they were outdoors, part of their general clothing. Today, well, the omnipresent baseball cap has usurped the wider collection of hats in general use. And, uh, you know, it's tragic, really, that even you see men in their 50s and 60s and 70s wearing a baseball cap, or even, even worse to a degree, the, the woolen skull cap. Um, these offer very little to the gentleman who's wearing them, other than a little bit of protection from the elements. Absolutely no style. So, yes, times are a-changing. Okay, so as you can guess, today I'd like to talk to you about the Trilby hat, because the Trilby is one of the classic dress hats, which has perhaps fared better than some of the others in its transition to the modern world. And that's, I think, because it's a little more understated than many of those more classic hats, like the bowler uh, and the Homburg, and even the slightly uh, related cousin of the Trilby, the Fedora hat. And I think the Trilby has made that transition more easily because, as I say, it's a little bit more understated and its silhouette is, it just seems to fit in with modern daily life a little bit better than those really signature hats, as I say, the Homburg and the Bowler from a bygone era, which conjure up images of historical figures like Winston Churchill, Stan Laurel, uh, you know, Hardy, the, the, the sort of comedians of the bygone era, whose uh, trademark was the bowler hat. So really the Trilby has managed to make its way across the passage of time and remains with us today as a viable form of headwear for us gentlemen in the modern era. Now to describe the Trilby's characteristics, it's not that challenging because let's take this typical woolen trilby hat here. It is of a slightly shorter brim than perhaps most of those other hats which we've talked about, particularly the fedora, which has a much wider brim, uh, and the bowler, which is much more distinctive in its silhouette than the trilby. Uh, 
Now the Trilby has a relatively short crown in most cases uh, and that brim will be angled down at the front whilst kicked up or angled upwards at the back giving it quite a distinctive appearance. It's still a hat which when you look at it conjures up images of a bygone era but because it's not so in your face perhaps as that fedora the hat favored by indiana jones in his movies or as i say the the homburg favored by winston churchill they are much more large and classic and more dominating in their appearance than the trilby so the trilby uh, i think easily can be worn by a gentleman in the modern era without looking too flamboyant or somewhat outlandish in the way that he chooses to dress now, as often is the case, when we look back into the history of any item of gentleman's clothing, there's a backstory there somewhere. And those are the things which bring these items to life for me. And the Trilby, interestingly, can trace its history back to 1894 in London, because there was a production of the George de Mornier's play, which was called The Trilby. And in that play, this hat, which was worn by the actors within the play, came to be referred to by the name of the play, The Trilby. And since that time, we've referred to this style of hat as The Trilby. So an interesting quirk of fate, really. Um, the hat's been around now for, well, 130, 140 years in its uh, reference as being referred to as The Trilby. Uh, and I think it's really established as one of the classic, elegant hats of the intentionally well-dressed man. So originally, our trilby would likely have been made from rabbit hair felt, which is bad news for rabbits, but the good news is, in the modern era, your trilbies are most commonly made of contemporary materials today. Um, two of these hats here are made of woolen felt. Um, I've got a thick cotton trilby here, and I've one which is made of paper as well, a summer hat. So they come in different materials, depending on how you intend to wear them and which season your hat is going to be worn in. Um, now, it's fair to say that the trilby probably had its heyday in the 1930s to say the 1970s, when it would have classically been worn by the well-dressed man as he went about his ordinary daily life. Um, certainly, you know, we saw it being worn by that cultural icon of men's style, James Bond. And if you look at some of the images of Sean Connery, his iteration of Bond, you'll see him sporting the trilby as part of his attire. And in fact, I think some of the images, those classic images of James Bond throwing his hat onto the hat stand in the office of the secretary, Miss Moneypenny, um, the trilby was the hat which he often threw onto that hat stand. So it has its place as a cultural icon. Now we've mentioned cultural icon. Let's explore that a little bit more because the trilby would have been the hat because of its every man status that you saw on the heads of many of the celebrities and you know the icons of the bygone era. Cary Grant, you'd often see him with a trilby. Um, the Duke of Edinburgh, one of the best dressed men in his lifetime. Uh, even in, you know, Frank Sinatra, uh, one of the biggest celebrities of his time. Humphrey Bogart, they would have all been seen sporting the trilby. In the modern era, um, the Duchess of Cambridge has even been seen wearing a, a trilby. So it's not just men, even females often do air towards the trilby as their dress hat of choice when they're trying to make a statement in the way uh, that they appear when they're using headwear outside of the normal feminine styles. Now the trilby has been my hat of choice for a very long time and that goes right back to my childhood because I remember my father who was a very much an intentionally well-dressed man he's 90 now so when I was growing up you know he was in his 40s and I remember him you know putting his suit on to go out on a Friday evening to go to the club to, to meet the other chaps for a drink and he would always wear a trilby and the trilby which he wore in my childhood is the trilby which he very much wears today. The hat is older than I am, as he often points out, and I'm 51, so he made a really good investment in that hat. And it still looks classically elegant on my father today, as an older gentleman, as I'm sure it did when he was a much younger man, uh, you know, as a chap about town in that more classical era when men dressed a little bit more elegantly. 
What draws me to the Trilby really is its practicality. The fact that it's not too big, it's not too bulky, um, it doesn't lend you that appearance of being eccentric and odd. Because I'm sure if I wore a Homburg today, um, you know, if I walked on, I, I live in a town which has got about 90,000 people in it. It's a fairly large town. And I'm pretty sure if I went to town this afternoon, at the time of filming, this is a Saturday afternoon, so it would be the busiest day in my town. If I stood in the high street in my town today, I would be lucky if I saw one or two gentlemen walking past me wearing a trilby. Uh, I would be wholly surprised if I saw any gentleman at all wearing a bowler or a homburg or anything more in that dress sense. But the trilby, I think, crosses the boundary. It is still acceptable in the modern era. If you see a gentleman wearing a raincoat or an overcoat and he's wearing a trilby, he doesn't look weird. It's still fits in the modern day, which perhaps cannot be said of the bowler, the Homburg and the Fedora. It would set you apart from, from the, the hoi polloi, perhaps to such a degree you might feel a little uncomfortable by the stares and the attention which you were receiving if you were wearing, say, a Homburg. But your Trilby allows you to look smart, highly presentable, effortlessly elegant, yet still cutting a dash in your own individual style. Yet, the most important thing, right, function over form. The Trilby is a hat which is practical. It is warm, particularly in a woolen pattern like this one here, very modestly priced. I think I bought, uh, none of these hats cost me over £20. I think these two in the middle, the woolen felt ones, the ones that I wear most of the time, these were about £20 purchased from eBay. Brand new, but from the, you know, the, uh, the sort of hat suppliers which you can find these days. Uh, nothing fancy, very modest, but they work a treat because that warm material. Now I've worn these hats in the depths of a winter's day in Central Europe when it's been absolutely freezing. And yes, it's true, they don't keep your ears warm, they don't pull down over your ears, but keeping the crown of your head warm retains that heat in the body and it keeps you looking stylish as well as keeping you cozy and warm as well. So it's got all of the features which you seek in a hat without making you stand and out from the crowd so far that you look strange and perhaps somewhat unusual. Now I know what you're thinking, you know, I've, I've rattled on about the positivity here of these hats, there must be some downsides. Well, of course there are. The Trilby, aside of perhaps making you stand out from the crowd a little, its one downside is it is upon the side of formality. So if you're a gentleman who perhaps routinely does not wear a raincoat or an overcoat, the Trilby might be difficult to integrate into your wardrobe. Now in the winter time, obviously I live in somewhat of a rural environment, so I tend to fa favour a barber jacket, a wax cotton jacket. It's perfect for my lifestyle until I go into the town and then I dress in a raincoat or an overcoat. But with a barber jacket, the Trilby doesn't really marry well with that practical informality. So you need to weigh up there the hat, it's not going to work well in informal situations. So, but then again, they're not expensive. You know, if you go for a modestly priced hat, put it to one side, think of it as part of your cold weather formal outfit. If you're going to, I don't know, uh, Remembrance Parade on that Sunday in November where we all gather together in the outdoors to celebrate, um, you know, sacrifices of others, the Trilby might be the perfect item to wear for that gathering outside where everybody is looking their best, but on a cold and chilly day. So there we go. In conclusion, I would say for me, the Trilby is the perfect marriage between old style and modern practicality. It bridges the gap well. You can look, you know, absolutely sharp and very intentionally well-dressed without looking far too much in the direction of eccentric. The perfect marriage in the modern era. So, I hope you've enjoyed today's conversation about the trusty Trilby hat. If you are looking to elevate your style on top of your head, it might be the perfect solution for you. I hope you've enjoyed this chat today. If you have, it would be a great honour if you were to give us a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the channel as well? That way you won't miss any of our future material. So until the next time, take care of yourselves and I will see you again, looking sharp in your hat, 
very soon.